Hey, and welcome back to the counter core and my playthrough of Hood Strikes North. We're on turn 6 now, November 28th. Um, I've done all the preliminary stuff. I did a random event, and of course we got late rain. The Union Manpower Enhancement uh, got a 1, so they don't get any Manpower Enhancement. They do get a Union Reinforcement way down here in Murfreesboro. Can't see it. It's way down here somewhere uh, off in the bottom right corner so uh, Knipe and Johnson's Brigade of Calvary and they come in south of Murfreesboro so these two come in south of Murfreesboro and that's some Calvary that the Union definitely needs right now because um, they got a lot they have to cover um, anyway so been thinking about some more I'll start with the uh, Confederate side since they're the attacking force, um, my thinking on their strategy. So with the uh, leader uh, transfer phase, I moved Hood up to Stewart's Corps. The thinking being um, we're going to concentrate Stewart's Corps in front of Columbia, and although it has the fort and it has all of Stanley's Corps, uh, we needed to keep him there or force them out basically give them a reason to i don't know think about us um and we'll leave because we need to wait a turn basically for lee to build his bridge um, it have to be fatigue zero so um so johnson's division can't move if we're going to build the bridge here that but clayton and stevenson's divisions can move so they're going to try hopping across the ford probably um, and Chalmers is going to protect, um, oh, I moved Forrest down here to Beford's Cavalry Division, um, which is north of Duck River, thinking there's probably going to be an attack down here. Um, so Chalmers' division is going to stay around the main force and protect the flanks. Jackson's going to try to get across the Duck River, either uh, here at Wallace Mill or come down to Franklin Pike and reinforce Forrest and try to go up the Franklin Pike. But Cheatham's division, uh, Corps, sorry, uh, they're exhausted, so they, we don't want them moving so they can recover to their normal side and get ready to move. When the bridge is done, they'll be fully uh, recovered as far as fatigue goes. Um, but they'll also be able to concentrate up here at Thomas Spring to do a grand assault on Columbia if Hood calls on them. Um, and so, yeah, that's, that's kind of the... Confederate plan of battle uh, for turn six. On the Union side, um, one of our big priorities is going to start consolidating all 23 Corps' uh, random regiments that they have, the 91st Indiana, 123rd Indiana. Um, probably going to attach them to either Moore or uh, Ruger, who's in Columbia. Um, might even move them to Fort Misner. Uh, to hold them out a little bit longer. I don't know. haven't figured that part out yet. The wagon trains definitely need to keep going towards Nashville because we have until turn 14, I believe, to get them there. Otherwise, uh, we lose victory points or something. I don't know. It's bad. We just have to keep moving them. Um, Waters Brigade is doing kind of a rear guard action on Rutherford Creek. We're going to keep him moving with the wagon train. And Schofield, I think he needs to get back up towards this part of Rutherford Creek, between Rutherford Creek and uh, Duck River, so that he can exert his command radius on 23 Corps um, and bring them all together to bear on whatever threat the Confederacy presents. Um, it's not, I think... It's not the end of the world if the Confederates take Columbia and um, Nashville still doesn't have any defenders. Can you, you probably can't see it on, no. Um, but Nashville still doesn't have any defenders. It does have the forts that are out there that need to be um, taken care of by the Confederacy, but um, that's where the big victory points lie is back that way. And there's really nothing stopping the Confederates from just keep saddling, sidling east down the Duck River, going to Franklin Pike, 
um, or down here Chapel Hill Pike, which goes straight to Franklin, uh, Nashville. So I think the Union will have to consolidate back towards Nashville to prevent being outflanked by um, the Confederates because otherwise, yeah, Stanley's Corps is just going to be hung out there on an island. I mean, they can't, um, if they do sally forth and try to take on one of Hood's Corps, they're only going to get maybe a couple of divisions, but they're going to need all their divisions to do the attack to get a favorable um, ratio, attack ratio, and that'll just leave Columbia open to be picked off by one of the other corps, basically. Um, so it going on the offensive isn't really a, uh, a possibility. I might leave like a little diehard force in Columbia just to, because they will get a times three manpower with the fort. So just to be a thorn in the side and prevent some easy victory points. Um, from the Confederates. I don't know, but we are going to definitely kind of move back towards the Rutherford Creek um, point, especially if um, the rain comes late and doesn't prevent the Confederates from crossing uh, Duck Creek, Duck River in force. So, yeah, that's uh, kind of where we're at. Enough talking. Let's uh, get to the dice rolling and I'll bring you back if there's any battles. So here we are at the end of turn... 6, November 28th. I haven't done the recovery phase yet, so you'll see, like, Cheatham's core hasn't been recovered yet. Um, there's some exhausted Union uh, troopers, I think. Um, but the rain came pretty early, like, within three activations, I think. So nobody was getting across the Duck River, um, and all the movement was bogged down. So um, I think... Really, that's the only thing keeping the Union in it at this point. Otherwise, um, the Confederates would be across the river right now. Uh, Lee can still put up his pontoon bridge. He has a plus one modifier, though. He has to roll five or below after the modification uh, to put the pontoon bridge up. That's in the recovery phase, so I'll let you know if that succeeds. But I wanted to give you an update on the historical um, campaign up to this point. So November 28th was when um, actually Lee's Corps did put the pontoon over Davis Ford, um, which took all day and some of the night. Um, and then the main rebel force actually moved up to the fort during the night to cross it the next morning. Um, and Wilson wasn't able to get anything to Schofield. Um, so the Union wagon train actually rested here between Rutherford Creek and Duck River. Um, so that's kind of where it was in the um, historical setting. The Union did abandon Columbia, I should have said, on November 27th. So one turn ago, um, the Union abandoned Columbia and started moving um, back north. So. Union is keeping, we're, we're about a day behind, I think, from the uh, actual campaign, which isn't bad. I don't think Forrest, he's still down here on the north side of Duck River, way out to the east. I don't think he got this far east uh, before crossing. I think he crossed also at Davis Ford. Um, anyway, he did, he, he is doing a good job of pushing um, the, the Federal Cavalry kind of to the north and east a little bit, or at least drawing them that way. Uh, Jackson's Division of Cavalry got down here. It's obvious they're trying to get up Franklin Pike and reinforce Forrest and Buford's uh, divisions. Uh, Chalmers is getting ready. If it's not raining, he's going to try to cross here. Um, the Union just don't have enough cavalry. They have a brigade with Croxton, and then even though there's three counters here, there's only really Lowe's brigade because Johnson um, is attached to Lowe and Wilson's also attached to Lowe. Um, and they don't have enough to contest the uh, building of the pontoon, and they don't have enough units to cover every single Ford. Um, and so already, I mean, Forrest's um, route up to Franklin is pretty open. There's only one regiment, 175th Ohio, that's in Franklin. Granted, there is a fort there, um, so the odds of 
Forrest actually being able to take Franklin on his own are low, but um, as I was playing, I realized that the uh, wagon trains are pretty much only like one, maybe one skirmish, cavalry skirmish, clearing off the pike, and then another good march, another good dice roll from maybe Jackson or even Chalmers division getting up to Spring Hill. So the Union are going to definitely need to probably move Schofield's Corps, the 23 Corps, over to Spring Hill to protect these wagon trains because I don't think Union Cavalry is going to be up to the job, but we'll see. Hood and Stewart's Corps camped outside of Columbia. Um, just for kicks, I looked at um, Stanley sallying forth and attacking the two divisions, but because it was a rain turn, um, and Stanley, you look at him, um, here's his counter, and you'll see his uh, assault rating is only five, so the odds of him actually getting all three units uh, into the assault with him are pretty low. Um, so, yeah, uh, and the last thing, the two Indiana regiments stacked with Ruger, so the next uh, attachment phase will be able to consolidate, consolidate them and uh, Ruger's 2nd Division will um, be kind of back up to strength. The only one that will be outstanding is Moore's Brigade, who is still covering the Duck River Station Bridge up here to the west of town. So, long-winded way of saying, um, I'm actually surprised how this is turning out. Um, and it's kind of cool to see it develop and see why the Union retreated north. Um, I think if, if I was playing an opponent and not myself, I would probably, and I was the Union player, I probably would try to contest um, the crossings at Duck River with Schofield's core um, just to see how it plays out. But for now, uh, since we didn't do that, retreating north is definitely the only option we have at this point, given how lightly defended Nashville is and how much open space there is for uh, basically Forest Cavalry Corps to run rampant. So yeah, that's the end of uh, turn six. So I'll do the recovery and I'll bring you back at the start of turn seven to let you know if uh, Lee was able to put that pontoon bridge up. All right, I thought I'd bring you in for a little close up of the action. So we're at the start of turn seven now, November 29. Uh, Lee did manage to make the minor river bridge, the pontoon bridge of the Duck River. So they'll have that. Um, and what else happened? Uh, Croxton got the Union Manpower Enhancement. They got a Cavalry Manpower Enhancement, so he's now up to three manpower. Uh, if we come over here to Nashville, General Thomas and General Smith uh, is starting to organize Nashville's defenses with MacArthur's division. Oops. So he's waiting. Uh, for the Confederate onslaught, basically. And here we are, there's the uh, vulnerable wagon trains from uh, hanging around Spring Hill. And here's Forrest on Flat Creek in front of Hatch. And um, there's Columbia with Hood banging on the gates, or just, I guess, waiting on the gates. Yeah, so that's the start of turn seven. All right, sorry, we got a little carried away by our excitement, so I forgot to bring you back so you can see the die roll, but essentially Croxton, let me get my little pointer. So Croxton's cavalry was here when we brought, uh, whose court, whose division is this? Johnson's division across the pontoon bridge, and Croxton did a cavalry retreat. He got a really good roll, so um, Johnson's division's movement was stopped there, and he couldn't move anymore. And then Croxton retreated uh, further north. And then Stevenson's division came across the bridge. And uh, Lowe's Brigade, which is under here, did a cavalry retreat screening action kind of thing. Um, and he retreated back up this way. And Stevenson only lost one movement point from that action. So he's still got two movement points. And I think... What he's going to do is he's just going to probably, uh, I don't know, I'm going to go ahead and do that off camera because I'm just going to hum and haul about it for a while. 
and then Clayton's going to have to come up, but we're not going to want to go too far probably. Anyway, so that's kind of where we're at with the Calvary stuff. Okay, so it's starting to get a little interesting here in, around Columbia. So what happened was basically the Confederates got about like five activations in a row, I think. Um, so obviously you can see it down a little bit. Um, so first uh, Lee's Corps uh, crossed over, you saw that with the cavalry. Then Cheatham, Cheatham's Corps came down here and crossed at the grist mill here and forced back Wilson with uh, Lowe's Brigade of Cavalry. So Cheatham's Corps was here, Lee's Corps was here, and they kept getting activations. So Lee marched his corps up to Rutherford Creek, and then Cheatham got another activation and marched his corps around the uh, east of Lee to try to get to Spring Hill. Um, and then finally the um, Union got a couple of activations. So Schofield moved 23 Corps, whatever units he could, um, towards Spring Hill. Um, and behind Rutherford Creek. Then the next activation, Stanley finally brought four corps out of uh, Columbia and abandoned it and pulled back to Rutherford Creek as close as he could. Um, so now uh, the fatigue for these two corps, um, Chetums and Lees, is pretty high, so I doubt they'll be going again. And we are uh, one one away from getting that late rain so expect everything to be bogged down soon but to the south it's looming the confederate cavalry um, who might try an end around uh, Hatch has to try to recover this southern flank or sorry eastern flank um, and try to get back up Franklin Pike to protect Franklin um, yeah no I'm definitely as the Union player, I kind of feel stupid thinking I could stay there because once the Confederates got across uh, Duck River, it was like the floodgates open and they just poured through. And now we're kind of strung out and feeling stupid. So this might not last that much longer unless the uh, Union can really pull something out of the bag and save these wagon trains. So yeah. We're still rolling, still going through the action phases. Um, expect Stewart's Corps to occupy Columbia and put the pressure on Stanley. Uh, expect Schofield to keep trying to move to Sprig Hill. And who knows, maybe Lee and, and or Cheatham will kind of try to cut off the uh, Union retreat through Spring Hill and get some of those wagon trains. We shall see. Okay, so here we are after the recovery phase of turn 7, November 29th, going into turn 8, November 30th. Um, so, let's see. Big news is Confederates took control of Columbia. Hood with Stewart's Corps marched through Columbia into that little neck between Rutherford Creek and Duck Creek. Uh, Lee's and Cheatham's corps haven't done anything conserving their fatigue, maybe for an attack next turn. The rain came in and really slogged everything down. Uh, Jackson and Chalmers cavalry is, they, they almost got up to uh, attack the wagon trains, but then Hatch did a, a forced march and got some good rolls and was able to do kind of an end around. Um, down here through Bethesda and up there back to Spring Hill to cover the wagon trains until Schofield could bring 23 Corps up to Spring Hill um, but of course 23 Corps is now exhausted um, Stanley got 4 Corps across Rutherford Creek before the uh, well it didn't matter there's a little bridge there but he got 4 Corps across the creek on Franklin Pike um, so they're in a good spot now um, and what else? Uh, I think that's about it. These two uh, Union Cavalry Brigades are kind of stuck back here um, because down here you have Forrest with Buford's Cavalry Division. Not sure what we're going to do with him yet. I mean, we might 
go down here to Murfreesboro do some raiding down there maybe to destroy some of these railroad stations um, like Smyrna, Laverne, uh, Antioch I think you get uh, victory points if you burn those railroad stations so we might go there or we might just keep on uh, focusing on turning the Union flank and we're really kind of getting bottlenecked now into Franklin, into Nashville. Um, eventually Hood's going to run out of room to do these um, end rounds, and he's going to have to attack at some point. I think he, like me, got a little um, tired of doing all these mar all this marching and wanted a fight, and that's what uh, happened at Franklin when he... Uh, at the Carter House, actually, look, it's right there. Um, I think it was the Carter House where he um, did a frontal assault on the Union lines and basically destroyed the Army of Tennessee. But anyway, um, that's all in the future for now. Maybe we'll get a battle around Spring Hill in the next turn. I'll go ahead and do all the preliminary stuff and bring you back to let you know kind of reinforcements and all they got. So here we are in the morning of November 30th, turn 8. Uh, the random event was late rain. Uh, the Union Manpower Enhancement, they got a Cavalry Manpower, so they gave it to Johnson's Brigade, who is now Manpower 3. They also got two divisions for um, Nashville, Moore, and Garrard's division from the Detachment of the Army of Tennessee under Smith. So they'll be hanging out in Nashville, waiting for the Confederates to try to do something silly, probably. Um, so Nashville is looking pretty well defended now. Um, so the, one of the victory points that the uh, Confederates get is they get one victory point for each victory point phase. Uh, that a division or brigade occupies Columbia. Now, I don't, I don't know if. I think that means. I mean, reading it literally, it means a Confederate division has to be in Columbia, which just isn't really feasible because we don't have that many divisions to work with. So, don't know if once we pass through it and take control of it. If that means we start accumulating victory points, I don't know. But again, not really doing victory points because it just confuses me. And I would be here reading those in structure, those uh, rules all day. And we all know who's going to win anyway. Um, it's that guy up there. So, uh, yeah. Uh, sorry if you're watching this to try to get clarification yourself because you're not going to find it here. All we do here is kind of butcher rules um, and have fun doing it. So let's see what we can get done before the rain comes in, and uh, I'll bring you back for. I'll do. I'll try to do a better job this time of bringing you back for anything that might be a die roll, like cavalry retreats and stuff like that. Anyway, so see you when I see you. All right. So here we are. No rain yet, but uh, we are going to get an assault. So uh, first. Well, Hood and Stephen, or no, sorry, this is uh, Cheatham's Corps, kind of hooked around and got up in Schofield's face, but he was able to get a few um, activations, so he consolidated 23 Corps under him, and Stanley was able to bring 4 Corps over here, but uh, Moore's Brigade and uh, Lowe's Brigade of Cavalry were still stuck. Um, kind of in no man's land out here covering these fords. Um, so Stephen Lee's corps pushed over this ford. Uh, Lowe's cavalry brigade did a retreat, um, but they lost uh, manpower in the retreat because of their retreat route. Um, probably got that wrong, but I think it's right. Um, and then um, the rest of Lee's core across the ford and all stacked in this stack right here. So I, I kind of broke down the stack to show you who's going to be involved in the assault. But uh, so I already did the assault um, 
rolling from command. They roll, uh, Lee rolled a two, so his assault value was four, which meant um, Johnson and Clayton, those are the only two who are gonna participate in the assault because that would give the uh, Confederates a 12 manpower in this assault and Moore only has four manpower. So uh, that's a three to one. So if we look at the uh, die roll modifier chart, if I can, is it gonna focus? Okay, maybe. Okay, there we go. Um, so um, there's no artillery modifiers because it's plus four and uh, that's no effect down here. Um, what else? Assault actions plus one. Uh, the ratio of modifiers a plus two for three to one. Tactical modifier is a plus uh, two because Lee is a three tactical, Moore is a one, and uh, it's not a rain turn yet, or it's not raining yet, so that's nothing. Um, so all told, if I'm doing my math right, it's a uh, plus five on the Confederate die roll. And let's see what happens with these dies. So not the best roll for either sign. Uh, black die is the Union. Gray die is the Confederacy. So uh, if we add the plus five modifier, so it's seven to three. Now on the result chart, let me see if I zoom out a little bit. Um, so the attacker is at 12 manpower plus three is one manpower loss, uh, fatigue two, and they can advance after combat. And over here, four plus three, they're just uh, disorganized, fatigued, and have to retreat. So once again, this game showing that uh, combat is never really worth it, I don't think. Um, that was not worth it for the Confederates. Uh, losing a manpower and fatiguing basically all of Lee's Corps um, just to make Moore's brigade retreat not worth it. So that's that assault done. Um, I'll mark everything up and I'll bring it back if there's any other uh, stuff happening. All right, so I think you can kind of see Lee's Corps advanced after combat and now it's face to face with elements of Stanley's four core. Uh, Moore's brigade, you might be able to see, is kind of tucked in here at Spring Hill after his retreat. Uh, the next activation was a Union activation, so Wilson's cavalry, Croxon's brigade, and Hammond's brigade. Uh, that's a five manpower, is going to try to assault uh, Jackson's division, which is three manpower. Um, Wilson's in this hex and Jackson's in this hex. I just kind of broke it down so you can see everybody. Um, so first we have to roll for command, and it's a four. Um, so uh, Wilson's command is a five, minus four is one, so he only gets one of his units uh, in this assault. And he's going to choose Croxton, who is the three uh, manpower. And uh, Jackson's going to defend with everybody, obviously, so it's one to one on the uh, the old ratio modifier. So that's plus zero. Uh, plus one for the assault action, though. Uh, tactical modifier is a two to two. Wilson's a two. Jackson's a two. So it's plus zero. Uh, it's not a rain turn yet. Um, and I believe there's no terrain modifiers or anything, so it's just plus one for the Union. And that's that's not good. Again, gray die is Confederate, so it's a minus uh, two on the old combat chart. So if we look at the attacker, I'm gonna zoom out, hold your seat. Uh, so attacker is at three, Minus three is a one manpower loss, and he's disorganized and fatigued. And minus three is nothing on the defender. So 
hope you saw that, sorry. Um, so unsuccessful cavalry attack by Wilson. Um, once again, kind of the Confederate cavalry are eating the Union cavalry's lunch. Um, so I'll go ahead and take away the manpower from, uh, sorry, who is this? From Croxton and make them disorganized and fatigued and all that good stuff. I'll bring you back if there's anything else going on. All right, so we're back in uh, Spring Hill and um, still on the November 30th turn. And I think we're going to do something stupid. I think Hood can't help himself. He's going to attack Force One, which is Stanley's core. Uh, if I put that there, can you see that? Yes. Okay, so Stanley's core has three divisions in this Force One marker. Uh, Wagner, Wood, Whitaker. And what happened, what's going to happen is Stewart is going to lead a assault on Force One, and then Hood is going to try to activate a Grand Assault so that he can bring in um, two of Cheatham's divisions as well. Um, this is going to be, sorry, this is going to be all up to the dice roll because um, I, I almost guarantee Stewart's not going to activate all three of his divisions. Um, and But we'll see. Maybe I'll be surprised. Maybe you'll be surprised. So first the command roll for Stuart. He's a command of six. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so that's how this game works. Uh, six, rolling a six unmodified uh, means that the assault automatically ends. So all that happened was Stuart's core gets more uh, fatigue. And then uh, the activation is over. So... That's that. No attack on Spring Hill this turn, because now everybody's too fatigued, I think. Um, but yeah, that's that. I'm going to keep moving everybody and see what's happening. So here's Spring Hill at the end of November 30th. Um, Hood's three cores are surrounding Spring Hill. Tried to do that assault and failed. Um, Stanley moved his force back to the north of Spring Hill and you can see they're all um, exhausted now, well, except Waters uh, Brigade, uh, but everybody else is exhausted. Um, what else? Lee's two divisions are exhausted. Uh, couple of the cavalry are exhausted. Jackson is up here at the Harpeth River. Forrest is trying to interpose himself between uh, the Union force at Spring Hill and Franklin by putting his uh, zone of control onto Franklin Pike. I think that's Franklin Pike, yep. Um, but yeah, the uh, Union are kind of between a rock and a hard place at this point. That's why I do like these games. I mean, in the beginning I was wondering how the Confederates we're going to crack this nut, but just a little bit of uh, maneuvering and posturing towards the ultimate objective when it was still uh, open and unprotected. It was enough to dislodge them, and now they're all caught out. Um, so Schofield and Stanley are going to have their hands full, um, breaking out further to the north to Franklin. I think, maybe famous last words, that they get to Franklin. Um, They'll be in good shape. I don't know if we're going to bring out some of the, uh, the detachment from the Army of Tennessee up there under Thomas and uh, Smith, if they're going to come out to Franklin or just stay in Tennessee, uh, Nashville. But that's the end of turn eight. I'll go ahead and do turn nine and bring you back when there's uh, more to talk about. All right, here we are in the morning of December 1st. So historically, November 30th was the Battle of Franklin, so obviously we're a little behind um, the historical pace, I guess you could say, um, but all good. The Union Manpower Enhancement Phase saw, uh, I think it was Whitaker's division of Stanley's Corps get another one, and he's up to seven manpower now. 
um, and the Union uh, reinforcements, they're coming in thick and fast now. Um, there's Steedman's division from the District of the Etowah. Is that, that's probably pretty, there it is. It's coming in in Murfreesboro. And then um, the defense of the Nashville and Chattanooga Railroad, I think it is. Uh, Milroy, he's a district leader, came in with Thomas's brigade. Uh, he comes in on uh, in Murfreesboro, but since he's a, a infantry leader, he can deploy his reinforcements in Nashville, which uh, the Union did. Now there's you can kind of see there's quite a stack of uh, Union forces in Nashville that I don't know how the Confederates are going to crack, but Murfreesboro is kind of uh, Weak, except for Steedman's division, but uh, we'll see how that goes. But for now, we're trying to save Schofield's corps or district, I guess. Um, is it the Army of the Ohio? I can't remember what AO stands for. Uh, I'll look it up and update you. But anyway, so we're trying to save them, seeing if we can do it. Uh, I'll let you know. So here we are south of Spring Hill. Stewart's Corps just moved up the pike. Hood's Corps, uh, sorry. Uh, Chetham's Corps still just hanging out. Stewart is going to initiate an assault. Uh, sorry, not, not Stewart. Cheatham's going to initiate an assault on Schofield because there's no creek between these two hexes. There's a creek between these two hexes though. So, um, Cheatham is going to initiate an assault, and then Hood is going to go for his little grand assault. It's got to work one of these times. So, um, Cheatham has two divisions in there, um, so for his command roll, we'll see if uh, he gets it. So he rolls a three, um, which means five minus three is two, which means both uh, divisions in here, who is it? Brown and Claiborne are both going to be in the assault. Now Hood wants to get both Stewart's Corps and Bates's division in on the grand assault. So he's going to roll now. Two. Five minus two is three, so he can include three uh, hexes uh, adjoining the target uh, hex into the uh, assault. So he's going to get Stewart's Corps, which is Loring, French, and Walthall in the uh, Grand Assault. And Bate is also going to be in the Grand Assault. Schofield has Cox's division and Ruger's division. So I'm going to go ahead and do some counting, and I'll let you know. I'll bring you back when I got everything tabulated as far as modifiers. And we'll do some rolling to see how this Grand Assault goes. Here's how this goes. The Confederates have 39 manpower to Schofield's 17, which means uh, it's a 2 to 1, so it's a plus 1 for the attacker's ratio modifier. Um, the Assault action is uh, another 1 for 2 overall. Tactical modifier, they're even. Uh, Stewart's to Schofield is 3 to 3, so nothing there. Um, plus 1 for Hood's assault bonus, so um, plus 3. And then plus 2 for the flank attack bonus because uh, the Confederates uh, have zone of control on the five surrounding hexes. Um, and then plus one for the uh, artillery modifier in clear because, um, yep, that's clear uh, because it's a plus. I think I, I think I counted. I think it was plus seven um, in the uh, artillery department. So um, plus six overall for the Confederates on this one. Let's see what we roll. They're all even fours, which you can't see. Let me see. There we go. It's as good as it's going to get. So 10 modified for the Confederates to four. Uh, 
plus six differential. So 39 combat value for the Confederates um, plus six means they lose one manpower, oh, yeah, one manpower and advance after combat. And uh, plus six for 17 manpower is three manpower loss, disorganized and route slash demoralized. So Schofield's little merit, band of merry men is routed. They're going to be getting the uh, fast march back to Franklin, and uh, Stanley's going to be left holding the bag, it looks like, around Spring Hill. But hey, finally a successful attack in uh, the Nashville campaign. I'm going to clean this up, get everybody their fatigue markers and uh, manpower losses, and I'll bring you back to show you where Schofield ends up. So. Here we are at the conclusion of the Battle of Spring Hill. Um, you can see Schofield routed up the pike and then up the railroad. And now as I think this is Independence. Yep, I guess it's the little town of Independence up there on the West Harpeth River. Because um, he kind of goes through far zone of control. So he's almost to Franklin, but uh, his army's disorganized and fatigued and kind of in a bad state. And that big stack is the uh, Union wagon trains. It's not looking like they're going to be getting to Franklin, and now we have to decide do we want to just burn the wagon trains so that Stanley's four corps can even stand a chance of getting to Franklin? Or uh, do we somehow try to push through Forrest with uh, Hatch's cavalry? Um, but who knows, maybe Hood won't even let us get to that far. Um, Stewart declined to advance after combat into the Jimson farm hex right there. Um, so they're just going to be camping out at Spring Hill. Um, but yeah, that's the uh, conclusion of Spring Hill. Three manpower for the uh, Union destroyed, one for the Confederates. So that's a good trade for the Confederates. Um, they'll be happy with that. And the Union actually won't be too terribly disappointed because... They're that much closer to Franklin, and they're delaying that that action instead of, you know, skirting around the south um, is buying them more time. Every turn, basically, that the Confederates don't move towards Nashville, the bigger Thomas's stack in Nashville gets. So that's not ideal. The papers won't like to read about that defeat, but um, still, it's not it's not the end of the world. Anyway, so that's the end of Spring Hill battle, and uh, gonna keep rolling. It is a late rain turn, so the rain could start at any minute, but we'll see how far we get. So here we are at the end of turn nine, December 1st. Uh, the Confederates have driven Union out of Spring Hill. Force One is still Stanley's Fourth Corps, as well as the wagon trains. Show you. Um, so that's Force One. Woods Division got the march out in front, but because of the whole rain thing, um, the rest of the uh, Corps didn't have enough movement points to get into his stack. Um, Schofield just hanging out up there, and Independence. Uh, Moore's Brigade. Uh, retreated, or not didn't retreat, just marched, and is going up the railroad hexes to try to take some congestion off of Franklin Pike. The the Union Cavalry is finally getting their act together, it looks like. Um, they're putting up a good screen now in front of uh, Hood's three cores. Forrest is still kind of... Um, Blocking the pike with his zone of control with Buford's division. I think this would be, he's under there. Buford's under there somewhere, I think. Uh, there he is. Um, so he's blocking the pike with his zone of control. Um, Jackson, meanwhile, is going after Smyrna, it looks like, to try to burn that railroad. Um, Thomas didn't do anything in Nashville. 
And uh, that's kind of it. Chalmers is going east, northeast-ish to get across the rivers. Uh, what's this? The Harpeth River. Um, and yeah, that's about it. Uh, the rest of the Confederate force rested to uh, maintain their fatigue, but it uh, looks like, barring something strange, the Union might at least get to Franklin. Um, I don't think Buford's cavalry division up there is going to really stop them once they get moving. So, we'll see though. Um, last turn was the last turn for Union manpower enhancements, so we skipped that phase in turn 10. Um, and this is the last turn to go up here on the turn track. Uh, the last turn that the uh, Union has for cavalry, then the next turn um, their mounts get worn out, and that's something crazy. So uh, that's how things are on the end of turn 9, start of turn 10. Um, I'll do random event. It's probably going to be late rain again. And Union reinforcements. And actually, Confederates get some reinforcements starting turn 10, so I'll roll for them as well, and I'll bring you back at the start. So here at the start of December 2nd, turn 10, um, the Union got one set of reinforcements, and it is Morgan's Colored Troop Brigade down here, coming in on Murfreesboro. Uh, you'll see also last turn, Steedman brought his division north to, or sorry, west to the cotton press. Um, and I think they're going to go up towards Florence and maybe defend that railroad station there at Overalls Creek. Um, in the leader transfer phase, Milroy came back down to Murfreesboro to take command of this stack of uh, colored troops, 5th Tennessee Cavalry, uh, 140th Indiana Regiment, and Van Cleve's Brigade, um, and that's the uh, defense of the Nashville and Chattanooga Railroad uh, unit Milroy has in command of, and then um, District of the Etowa Steedman's uh, Division is also protecting Murfreesboro. So don't think the Confederates are going to be able to take that unless they swing all three corps down here probably. Um, but uh, he, he did leave uh, Thomas's brigade in Nashville, and the Confederates got their one reinforcement, um, Smith's brigade from Cheatham's Corps uh, arrived on the western or southern board edge, and I think we'll just use them to occupy Columbia, um, get some victory points. I've decided there has to be a Confederate unit in there to get those victory points. Um, so that'll be a good uh, occupation force. So that's that. That's the uh, preliminary phase complete. Uh, plans for this turn. Union just getting to Franklin and Hood is going to nip at their heels the entire way and see if there any opportunities come up for something. Some big beautiful battle for Hood to do a grand assault on. Anyway, that's that. I'll bring you back if there is an attack. Um, otherwise, I'll show you how everybody ended up at the end of the turn. So, here we are in turn 10, December 2nd. Um, historically, Hood was already at Nashville by December 2nd and enveloping the city. But we're still out here around Franklin. Uh, Force 1 is Stanley's 4th Corps and Hatches, some of Hatch's cavalry. Uh, with some of the wagon trains. They're all exhausted. Um, so they're in Franklin. The 175th Ohio uh, moved out to occupy this fort, which is Fort Granger. Um, wagon train A got through Franklin and is still going up the Franklin Pike, you know, making its way slowly. The rain came again. I think I forgot to mention that. Uh, before, but the random event was, of course, rain, uh, sorry, late rain, so um, not much happened after, or not much movement happened after that. You'll see some of the uh, cavalry. Johnson, he did a delaying, cavalry retreat delaying action, and I think Wilson, uh, his stack also did a 
cavalry retreat. Um, so Lee's Corps and Stewart's Corps are taking the uh, Franklin Pike up towards Franklin, while Cheatham's Corps is going near this ford, which is Hughes Ford. Um, they weren't able to build the bridge because they were too fatigued, um, but they might be able to storm across and push that cavalry aside uh, starting the next term. We'll see what happens. Uh, in other news, on the railroad, Jackson's division, they were only able to damage it because they didn't have enough manpower. So they damaged the railroad station. Uh, Steedman is coming up with his division to force that cavalry out. Um, Force 2 is in Murfreesboro. You'll see that's Milroy's uh, Defense of the National Chattanooga Railroad. Um, I don't know, district, I guess. Army. Whatever you want to call it. District. Um, as well as a uh, Morgan's Colored Troops from the Department of the Etowah, or District of the Etowah. Um, so it's really a mixed bag, but they should be able to hold Murfreesboro, I think. Um, so yeah, that's, and I uh, looked at the uh, historical maps of the Battle of Nashville and Steedman was in the Nashville defenses historically. So I'm sorry, Thomas, that you didn't get uh, Steedman's division. Uh, now I bring you over to the chaos that is the um, status sheets. You'll see, oops, sorry, Schofield's divisions, 23rd Corps, are still disorganized, demoralized, they got their everything. They can't fix that because they keep getting fatigued. Um, then the wagon trains are also, they're uh, kind of hurting as well. Stanley's Four Corps did an extended march and lost some manpower, so Wagner lost two manpower, I think, and Whitaker lost the one manpower, and of course they're both disorganized now. Um, and I think that is it on the manpower side. I'll show you. I don't know if I showed any of this yet. So there's Cheatham's Corps, Stewart's Corps, Lee's Corps, and Forrest's Cavalry Corps, three divisions. So that's the uh, status sheets. And uh, we're going to move into turn 11 when the Union Cavalry get worn out um, December 3rd. I have to read up on what that does exactly, but I think we remove Union Cavalry maybe from the board. They have to come back. I can't remember. Maybe we treat them like infantry. can't remember. I'll uh, look it up, get back to you, and explain it uh, when I cut back. But actually, uh, actually I think I'll cut this video here. Um, and yeah, I think that was about five turns. I've lost track at this point on these videos. Um, but yeah, I hope you uh, are enjoying this campaign playthrough. Um, let me know in the comments what you think you would do differently on either side. That's always fun to hear. I'm no grand strategist. Um, most of the time, I'm just trying to get the rules right, to be honest. But um, yeah, I'm pretty happy with my performance as the Union and really delayed the Confederates and allowed Thomas to build up his forces in Nashville. Um, but at the same time, we still got a lot of we haven't gotten the wagon trains back to Nashville and Schofield's Corps and Stanley's Corps are still hanging out to dry in Franklin with some high fatigue and they're exhausted but if it's not a rain turn they could definitely get back to Nashville on uh, the next uh, initiatives because with maybe a forced march uh, if they can I have to see who's organized and who's uh, whose strength markers are organized, but uh, if they can get back to these forts that are printed on the map um, That'll be a big boost and Then Thomas can organize his counterattack once the Confederates catch up 
But that's all tomorrow for now. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you would do differently. And uh, yeah, I'll see you on the next one. See ya.